This is a response to Essence of Thought. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to apologize to my subscriber base. Uh, this whole YouTube drama has begun to seriously distract from the main purpose of this channel, which is idealism and issues pertaining to it. Uh, these responses to Essence of Thought are the last I intended to do in this matter. Uh, if he wants to reply, that's up to him. However, the usual content will resume shortly. Also, before I begin, I want to give a quick shout out. I believe State of Daniel is planning to do a video on this topic as well, and he's generally a cool guy when it comes to all things political, so make sure you drop by his channel and check it out. Ie's concept of loving gay people is not love at all. It attempts to attack their very identity and feelings whilst claiming to emanate love. It appears that you are equivocating between one's sexual feelings and one's worth as a person. And contrary to the opinions of some, an individual is greater than the sum of his or her sexual desires. And Rat's video called Homophobia, Bigotry, and I, Emanuela vs. YouTube Atheist Brats, or YABS for short, which is publicly known as Young Woman Attacked for Her Beliefs. Nice attempts to save there. For your information, I changed the title because my political consultant said it would gain more traction with that title. Perhaps you thought I had a problem calling out spell brats for what they are. Clearly, you are mistaken. Childish temper tantrums over hurt politically correct feelings do not concern me, Peter. That said, the new title was more catchy and more accurate. See, after the recent Duck Dynasty incident, she made a video on homosexuality wherein she basically reiterated the orthodox Christian position on it. Uh, you know that it's not the intended purpose for sex. No, she gave a bigoted speech in which she attempted to attack LGBT equality in a number of ways and passed it off as love. Let's break this apart because it appears there are a few propagandistic memes being introduced. Uh, by bigoted speech, I take it you are referring to the orthodox Christian view of homosexuality as a sin, and if you're referring to the AIDS comment, I will address that later. And then we have the second propagandistic meme, uh, attack LGBT equality. If you had been honest, you would have noted that she stated that she believes that people with homosexual desires are equally made in the image of God, just like everyone else. For those of you fighting it, I will not venture to call you a homosexual. You are a man or a woman created in the image of God who happens to be suffering with homosexual feelings. Rather, what she said is that homosexuality is not equal to heterosexuality. But of course you ignored that an orientation is not a person, and of course since the orthodox Christian view is that homosexuality is a sin, this also entails that you are distorting what she said for political effect. You know, her video wasn't that long. It was only six minutes. You could have played through the entirety. Or, at the very least, you could have linked to a mirrored video in your description. It's almost as if you intentionally don't want people to actually watch her video, and both of us know why, I believe. I sometimes forget to put in the links, but it's in the description now. Well, was. I may upload a new version of it with the usernames blocked out. Uh, but I didn't want to have a 26-minute video that was going to bore everyone. However, I don't appreciate you imputing motives to me. Leviticus 20, verse 13. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Now she skips part of the passage, so allow me to give it in full. Leviticus 20, 13, the New International Version, reads as... If a man has sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. So you think that by quoting a passage that actually orders the death of LGBT members, she is somehow not being hateful or bigoted. Yes, I am well aware of this. I think she merely quoted this, though, to show that it's not something trivial. I would ask you, though, how many Christians today outside of the Westboro Baptist Church advocate for this. I seriously doubt they would include her. Besides, Jesus did sort of set a different precedent on things like this after the incident with the woman caught in adultery. But excuse me, since when is a Christian merely quoting a Bible verse considered bigotry? The very language itself, abomination or, you know, detestable, is hateful. So the impersonal language itself is hateful. Someone couldn't simply hold that as a factual belief without attaching an emotion such as hate to it? Uh-oh! Thought crime alert! To tolerance camp. You are here because you would not accept people's differences. Because you refuse to accept the life choices of your fellow man. Well, those days are now over. 
Here you will work every hour of every day until you submit to being tolerant of everybody. Here, intolerance will not be tolerated. And let's be honest, that is by your own standard what you appear to be thinking. If we judge you by the same standard that you judge her, then by that standard you are inciting hatred by comparing her holding her views to someone committing a crime. And with hate speech like this, there is little wonder as to how all of the vitriol was incited. Oh, and another thing. It is teaching that this is wrong. Teaching that it's wrong? Face it, Peter, you want to brand her a hateful bigot because you don't like her saying it's wrong. Sorry, but I'm not putting up with that. Even though everything has been shown to be contrary, homosexuality has been shown to no end to be natural and to be a healthy variant of human sexuality. Except, of course, that it's not functioning according to its intended telos. And then, of course, I have an interesting video someone sent me by a former APA president who says that the research on homosexuality was never actually done, and that the official stance on it was changed for political reasons. Uh, that may or may not be what I. Emanuela was referring to in her sponsor's comment. Anyway, I have that link below as food for thought. It's found across a number of different species throughout nature as well. So in humans, it's natural. In animals, it's natural. It is not an abomination. Simple. That sounds like an objective moral judgment to me, but as we all know, you define morality as an individual sense of right and wrong. So you really don't have a leg to stand on here. She herself stated, it was like saying murder is wrong. Yes, Peter, she no doubt believes it's a sin. You know, the orthodox view. Sadly, Ratsy boy, neither you or her know anything about love. Love is not rejecting a part of a person's identity, who they are, who they actually love. All that exists here is homophobia, a complete lack of understanding leading to an irrational fear, hatred, or disgust. And there we go again, intentionally equivocating a person with a sexual orientation. Of course, I suspect you're doing this on purpose so that you can label people who take the love the sinner, not the sin attitude as hateful, bigoted, or homophobic. What's more is that this is leading her to develop some form of messiah syndrome for a null issue. So in other words, what you mean to say is that unlike some people, she was actually trying to be a Christian and make sure you don't go to hell. And because of that, you saw fit to smear her and assassinate her character. People like you, bigoted and expressing hateful views. And apparently I was right. Labels like these are very useful in dishonestly inciting hatred of people from more than one religion who share these views, aren't they now? Well, the only hater I see here is you. Apparently you are hateful of anyone who says you are wrong, which reveals a very interesting insight into your psychology. And you, as well as your friends, have denied it as she said. She has equated sex between two consenting adults with gunning down children, sexual assault, and child molestation. And you dare say she wasn't hateful, bigoted, and homophobic. Unless you tell me in what manner or dimension she was comparing it, that is also intellectually dishonest. Now, you're going to bring up the AIDS comment in relation to the gunning down children comment, but we'll get to that in a moment. You need someone to place a boot up your backside to bring you back to reality. A boot up my backside, eh? Well, I could report your video for hate speech right there, but I won't. Rather, I think it's better to let it stand as a testament to your hypocrisy and to the danger of your views. And for those who think that she's not equating the two and she sees them as different, play on. Whoa, whoa, hold up. Homosexuality is different. It's not hurting anyone. Not hurting anyone? In 2005, according to the Joint United Nations Program on AIDS and the CDC, in San Francisco, 90% of all new AIDS infections are among men who have sex with men. In Los Angeles, 71% of those living with AIDS are gay or bisexual men. Not to mention the more than 50% of all AIDS transmission in the U.S. to be due to male-male sexual contact. Last I checked, AIDS hurts. So you see, she specifically argues that it is the same. To be honest, when I first saw this, I paused here to comment prior to thinking about her linking it to the AIDS comment. But let's break down exactly how it is being compared. From what I can see, she is comparing it in two primary ways. Firstly, that both are things towards which people can have sinful impulses, and secondly, that both have negative consequences. 
Neither of these are particularly surprising, however. The first we knew, and the second makes sense from a standpoint of teleology. If something is being used contrary to its intended design or logos, there will undoubtedly be negative consequences as well. Uh, she's not necessarily comparing the degree of the negative consequences, however, or it's also possible that her view of morality may be more complex than merely reducing to direct harm and consent. Perhaps she's thinking it's wrong because it's outside of the intended function of, for sex instead, in which case she may think it is much more serious in that particular category, and then simply add it on ways that it causes harm afterwards. Personally, I think it was a faux pas to use these as examples, but this is not a reason to make assumptions about her motives. As for the worst of comments, her video had thousands of comments. Some people on YouTube are dicks. You yourself noted there are trolls. Therefore, in thousands of comments, you are going to find a good number of trolls. Okay, here's the problem. I only picked the comments that were bad and also did not have substantive opinions in them. However, if I added those in as well, there would be hundreds more, including hundreds smearing her character as well. She made really good videos. Um, and again, I just want to point out the utter hypocrisy in all this, where people who claim to be really tolerant just completely lose it when confronted with differing opinions. Um, and when confronted with people who endorse traditional sexual ethics. Um, so, thank you for listening. Sexual ethics is dealing with consent, something you three don't seem to understand. Now, this was directed towards DeRezd, but I want to briefly comment on it because it is very telling. What you were suggesting is that sexual ethics consists only of consent between two humans, meaning that there is no added dimension to sexual ethics here, no set of standards that is higher than the wills of human beings. And if that's all there is, that can't really be considered to be a sexual morality any more than consensual hedonism is sexually moral. By that standard, such things as consensual prostitution should be legal. Now, I'm guessing you think that's fine. Unfortunately, this gives other atheists a bad name and is likely part of why the average American trusts atheists in positions of political authority the least. With Christians so lacking in knowledge of consent, I can't imagine what those Christian dating websites I get the ads for are like. It can't be pretty. No, Christians believe in consent, it's just that we also believe in other things as well, such as chastity or intended purposes for sex or marriage. But that's not something you understand, since you don't appear to adhere to any moral ideals higher than your own personal desires. Yeah, don't really care, man. Previous videos don't have an effect on this one, unless they're actually linked by her. Actually, it does. I added this clip because I was trying to demonstrate her character and show that she was not the person people were smearing her as. Remember, the video was primarily about PC bullying, and I was trying to show that it was completely unjustified. This is the kind of person who would have gladly been your friend. Whilst trying to figure out how to change every aspect of you, thus betraying your trust and compassion, and thus being a very shitty friend. Firstly, it's not every aspect, unless perhaps you think that sexuality is the be-all and end-all of human existence. But that requires a priority check. Secondly, the reason she would want to change someone is because she believes that person would be going to hell otherwise. And a good friend would not want that, now would they? By watching the whole of the video, I can't seriously believe that she is hateful or that she has ill will towards her friend. I mean, it's obvious. One day, all of a sudden, it put on a face that I recognized and I cared about. It was extremely unexpected. It shook my world and all of a sudden, homosexuality became personal. My feelings towards homosexuality has not changed, but my feelings towards homosexuals has, which I feel has distinguished my approach from the majority of my Christian brothers and sisters. When this person built up the courage to be real with me, about this issue. It was so unexpected, but I knew for a split second I was feeling what Jesus feels towards people who are struggling with this. It was pure, unutterable love and concern. Not the love that pats on the back and says it's all good. It was the love that seeks to reform.
The world, and especially the LGBT community, has this fluffy, watered-down idea of what Christian love really is. Being a Christian means standing up for what is right. Why do you think Christ was crucified? His love didn't infuriate anyone. It was his stand against the pride of his nation, fueled by self-filled desires. That got him crucified. Homosexuality is a major inconvenience. I understand that. But you are not stuck. You are not a victim. You are loved. And there is an amazing plan for you. In the end, it is your choice. But no, there is hope. Now, let me tell you a little story, Peter. My idealism page has attracted a lot of people from various religious and spiritual backgrounds, and two of the more predominant groups are Christians and Muslims. One of the Muslims, a young mechatronic student from Egypt named Ali, is a good friend of mine. By the way, I think this will be a good opportunity to give his channel a shout out. Uh, currently all of his videos are in Arabic, but he's planning to make some videos in English on idealism in the future. So I'll suggest to my subscribers that you check out his channel, Idealist Physicist, if you get a chance. Now, he's a Sufi, and I think they'd be more open to ecumenism than other branches of Islam. Um, I myself identify as a Christian Neoplatonist, and I'm cautiously optimistic that there is room for C.S. Lewis' view that people can unwittingly serve Christ under another name. But here's the thing. If his book is taken in the strictest sense, I'm going to burn, and likewise, if my book is, he is. And because of that, we have, on occasion, tried to prod each other towards each other's religions. Now, if he came right out and said why he was doing this, I would still consider him a good friend. Why? I would understand his motives for doing so. He wouldn't want me to go to hell. And I would recognize that as a personal virtue, despite the fact that he would be trying to change a very large part of my identity. Because he'd be doing so out of goodwill. And likewise, I have no doubt that he would think the same of me. But see, that's not something you can understand. You can't seem to understand the difference between tolerance and acceptance, nor do you seem to understand the concept of valuing a person beyond just their identity. You're never going to know what it's like to be someone's friend simply because they're a person, whether or not they agree with you. And in fact, if they don't agree with you, it appears that you despise them. And it appears this is even the case with people being sympathetic towards your own position. You're transparent, Peter. Your fedora and smug attitude, uh, they don't fool me. You're a small man underneath. You can't see that someone like I, Emanuela, can be doing this out of good motives and not actually hate you, because you can't see that in people in general. Homosexuality is a major inconvenience. I understand that. But you are not stuck. You are not a victim. You are loved. And there is an amazing plan for you. So instead, you see fit to brand her a bigot or a homophobe simply because she disagrees. And this same attitude was expressed all over the comment sections of your videos. So tell me, who's really the tolerant one here? Who's the bigger person? You're the weak one. And you'll never know love. Or friendship. And I feel sorry for you. Mistake. I have the goods on you, and you're going to be held accountable. Right. Well, that is on par with a threat. You are now threatening us. Do you not see the hypocrisy here? Reporting bullies is not the same as bullying. Keep in mind, that is why I didn't collect all of the hundreds of actual opinions that happen to be hate speech or spear-laden as well. Except that huge heap of bigotry and evidence of bigotry that I played earlier. Actually, no, that only makes sense if you make assumptions as to what her motives were, as I explained earlier. But judging from the rest of the video that I've played elsewhere here, you seriously can't argue that that was her intention. You idiot. You seriously did not just make that classical mistake. The response, the classical one, what about heterosexuals who are infertile? By your own argument, they are not allowed to have sex as it is highly immoral. The trouble with infertile couples is not that their orientation isn't functioning for its intended purpose, it's that their reproductive mechanics are not functioning for their intended purpose. If I were to analogize to software and hardware, this would be a matter of their biological hardware not functioning rather than their behavioral software not functioning. Uh, the behavioral software of the infertile couple is just fine. Also, only 30% of women can reach orgasm through penetration, whilst this flips around to be 70% who can receive it through clitoral stimulation, i.e. with the hands or the mouth. What does this tell you about sex? That it's not all about making babies, but forming deep social bonds for a deep social species. 
and the teleological purpose of social bonding is to create the foundation for families for reproduction. Uh, these two are connected as part of the same whole. If sex is disconnected from teleology, well then it has no meaning or purpose outside of what humans give it. And as we all know, purpose is what defines morality. So without a telos or purpose, sexual morality could not exist in the first place. Well, of course you think it's BS, because you don't believe in purposes higher than yourself. So you have what, exactly? Speculation topped with more speculation. No studies prove what you have just said. I had heard of a series of negative social effects relating to gay marriage for a while, but I hadn't dug up the links at the time. However, I have a paper for you in the description that documents a series of negative effects pertaining to the decline of marriage and family structure on the whole in various Western European countries. And hey, I'm in Norway right now, and I'll tell you it's doing pretty well. It's got a strong economy, low crime rates, low bullying, very little class difference. It's pretty good here. I said tend to be. Obviously, it's not going to be universal, but uh, take a look at that paper. However, many of the issues you raise are tangential to the state of moral decay I am referring to here. Why is it that the Norwegian article you mentioned is missing from the description? Because I hadn't tracked down the original source when I made the video. I had seen it before, but when I tracked it down, I found a site that you would likely not find credible. Now, the article cited a more reputable source, uh, the Weekly Standard, but the link was broken. In any event, I found the original article cited, which is now in the description. Well, actually, you'll find that the entire ideology known as Marxist feminists perceive the family as merely a patriarchal construction to oppress the females, as well as to allow inheritance of property, i.e. to keep the rich rich and the poor poor. It is a method of control by the bourgeoisie. So that's an entire group that believes that. Yes, I am well aware of Marxist feminists, but I don't tend to consider cultural Marxists to be morally sane individuals. When presented with a societal ideal, they only see a power structure and are completely blind to the good in it. And this is not only true of marriage or even sexuality, but also with a great many societal ideals across the board. But I'll grind that axe elsewhere. But, you know, how does the view of one woman or even an entire group affect what I think? H how does that work? I view marriage as a wonderful thing, a civil institution that dates back to the first of mankind and his earliest rituals. Oh, and by the way, some cultures like Native Americans allowed for gay marriage and even celebrated them as dual spirits, just as they celebrated trans individuals as dual spirits as well. Well, it wouldn't necessarily, but the effect is still the same. But I do at least appreciate that you are not taking the cultural Marxist approach to this and we will get to the discussion of comparative religion a little later. Oh, you just became a hypocrite. Have a go at others for being insulting. Insult others. Look, to be perfectly honest, I was really, really unhappy when I made this script. I was ticked. I actually had to revise the video several times. In fact, the whole episode brought back some rather dark attitudes regarding politics that I would rather like to forget. And maybe some stuff leaked through that shouldn't have. However, it was partly accurate as a reference to Thomas Carlyle's description of utilitarianism as, quote, pig philosophy. Not to discuss utilitarianism here, but he said this in reference to using degree of pleasure as the only measure of what is good. And what I'm saying here is that without some larger telos for sex, pleasure invariably becomes the highest good, ergo pig morality. In my book, if we have two consenting adults who want to get married, Lit them. It's not my business. End of story. Remember, two consenting adults. Well, to be frank, that's fine with me as a private ceremony. In fact, when the gay marriage issue first came out, I was in favor of homosexuals contracting each other rights in things like domestic partnerships. But at the same time, I also don't want the social institution of traditional marriage to be damaged. Now, I think that sexual morality goes beyond just consent, but at the same time, I don't seek to get into anyone's bedrooms as a matter of legality either. My concern is primarily with the social effect of getting rid of traditional marriage. I don't like Miley Cyrus any more than you do, but go fuck yourself. On how she decides to enjoy herself, you prudish arsehole. It does not harm you in any way. Actually, it affects society on the whole. See, it appears you have a particleized view of human behavior. 
The issue is not that she was doing what she was doing, but rather that she was being looked up to by millions of impressionable young fans. But you don't see that because you're only seeing the consent side of this. Because it is. But unlike with homosexuality, there cannot be consent given by a child. Well, this subject does require more elaboration than what I gave it in the first video, but according to the DSM-5, uh, pedophilia, quote, refers to a sexual orientation or profession of sexual preference devoid of consummation, whereas pedophilic disorder is defined as a compulsion and is used in reference to individuals who act on their sexuality. In other words, they are normalizing having such impulses. And this brings us to the issue of the Italian pedophile that I will get to in a moment. You morons don't understand that one C word, do you? Seriously, you need to go and learn what that C word is. If you do not learn what that C word is, and you go out and try finding a girl, we're going to end up with Deuteronomy 22, 28 through 29, where you rape her, aren't we? No, I understand it quite well. Uh, that's not the problem. The problem is that you are thus far using consent as the only criterion of sexual morality. And by the way, way to go in implying that an entire group of people would find rape acceptable. And I would view this as equally wrong, so you are making no argument here. Yes, you personally would, but it's thinking similar to yours regarding consent alone that allowed this to occur in the first place. See, the age of consent in Italy is 14 years, which is way too young for someone to be having sex, and then the slippery slope to 11 actualized itself as a result. Let's face it, if there had been no sexual revolution, this would not even have come close to happening. And if you think about it, this is somewhat related to what I. Emanuel was getting at. Not that it's connected to homosexuality per se, but rather it's the direct consequence of disconnecting sex and telos in the larger picture. And this is the end of part one. I'm uploading these back to back, so by the time you've gotten here, the second one should be up already. If you liked this video, subscribe. And don't forget to check out my novel, Alaris, The Lances of Light, on Amazon Kindle in the description below. Now you can find us on Facebook at Idealism and Science vs. Atheism. This mind is the matrix of all matter.